Um, hi, my name is Steve. Uh, we work for a company called Totem, and we're about to give you a little presentation on uh, winning with plans and the like. Um, so it's going to be about an hour. We're going to have about sort of 45 minutes of presentation. At the end, we're going to have Q&A, um, so you have a chance to ask questions. If there's anything that you really don't understand, feel free to put up your hand, and we will answer that for you directly. And I'm just going to keep on flowing through. Uh, so today is going to be a very sort of interactive presentation, maybe little quizzes and stuff like that. Um, so hopefully it'll be an enjoyable experience for you all. Um, so, as I said, my name is Steve. I run a company called Totem, uh, which I'm going to tell you about shortly. Um, and this is Amelia. She's our strategy director at Totem. Um, and so basically today we're going through intro introducing you guys to how to work with brands and, and manage brand deals, uh, understanding what brands want um, and what to expect when working with brands and also how to keep it real. So it's very important when you work with a brand, you have a strong and solid and honest collaboration with them. And if you don't, it will impact your fans and your growth and also the brand itself. So important to fight strong synergy with who you're choosing to work with. Um, to give you an idea of who we are, uh, first of all, has anyone ever heard of Totem before? Anyone? Awesome, so pretty much no one. This is a good start. <laughs> So we're, we're basically, we're our, a social video advisory and studio. But I'll, I'll, I'll play the video for you first, and you might be familiar with some of the work, and then we'll go into the next section. social video advisory, studio, and also a multi-channel network. So we're actually invited by YouTube to start the company in 2012 um, due to some of the work we've done in this space. And so we're now consulted to the biggest free-to-air networks in Australia, so like Channel 10, Channel 7, all those sorts of guys, as well as the biggest distribution companies like Village Roadshow, the biggest telcos like Telstra. Uh, we consult to Sony Music and all their artists and train them how to grow their influence. Uh, Afters, Film School, we're not familiar with Afters, so we did their global strategy as well. Um, and the like. So we, all we do is focus on video strategy. So essentially we combine uh, business innovation, social media and video to uh, create real business outcomes like a measurable return on investment. So we work on the brand side. Uh, but through that process we've done a lot of input to projects and deals uh, which we'll go through a few shortly. Here's some examples of some people that we've worked with, some of them you might be familiar with. Um, so we've done over a thousand pieces of content um, in the last couple of years. So we, uh, we do okay in this space. So some examples, have you ever heard of like Bethany Motor? So we work some people in the US as well. All fine. Anyway, you get a general gist. We're okay. Um, so introduction <laughs> to brand deals. Who here has actually had a brand deal before? Excellent. A couple of hands, so some familiarity. And who hasn't had a brand deal and really wants a brand deal? Yeah, it's good. All right, awesome. Um, so what is branded content? Branded content is a collaboration between a creator and a brand Typically, when the creator is given the brand exposure and engagement, um, is given the brand exposure and engagement with their audiences in return for getting paid, money, products, or resources. So it could not necessarily just be money; it could be many other things that you can benefit from, even their audience, for example. Um, so, has anyone ever heard of Mighty Karma? Yeah. No, yes, no. Yes. Okay, very good. Yeah, all the males have heard of Mighty Karma. Uh, <laughs> understand. And we had a lot of Lauren Curtis. There you go, the female 
else like Laura Curtis. Okay, that's fine. Um, so, what was that? Uh, so, Marty Carmod, so uh, this is a really interesting uh, brand integration with Village Roadshow. Can anyone guess what they were promoting? Yeah. Okay, good. That's a bit obvious, but uh, you get the general gist. So, I'll play a little bit of this for you. of Mighty Car Mods. In fact, not just another episode, but a very special series of videos. That's right, as you may have heard, Mad Max Fury Road will be out soon, so we've decided to build our own car inspired by the film. You might call it Mod Max. Mod Max. So the first thing we're going to do is go on... Cool. So they get the general gist. The very organic integration. They love cars. They love Mad Max. Um, you know, they love the brand. It, it's, a, it's an Australian, you know, Australian-founded show. Um, so it's, uh, it's a really good, clean integration. Basically, there's no end to the types of integration you can do. Uh, on the next one we've got here. Okay, so there's also, mm -hmm. as I said, many different types. There's passive placements and there's also active placements. So if people are familiar with Casey Neistat, I'm sure, <laughs> the lord of the vlog. Um, and then passive placement like this one. So I'm going to get you to guess what brand is uh, being promoted in this piece of content. Dear King, because you are so small, you cannot jump, which is sad, sad for you, but eventually you will, and you will find the places that I refer to as up. This will come in handy, especially around the human larva, which I know smells like milk, but can be a bit grabby. Dear King, you should be aware that there are two kinds of food. The first is sort of a dehydrated brown niblet. I think they gave us these because they are training us to be astronauts. Just a guess. The second kind is wet food. It is so special they keep it in little armored metal casings that no claw can penetrate. With no claws to speak of, the humans can somehow open them. It's like some dark magic. Dear kitten, I should warn you of the monster known as Vacuum. <laughs> at the same time. And I've seen it eat everything. Seriously, like a paperclip and two cat toys. Didn't even flinch. <laughs> to hide from vacuum, you may use the curtains of invisibility. Do <laughs> 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 you know, I guess it's Brad? Excellent. Okay, and the second one. Want to see the coolest thing I've ever seen in an airplane scene? didn't get paid for this. He, he did get given something in exchange for an amazing experience which he got to capture and share with his audience. And that's a really interesting and unique way to create and do brand deals with different people and also to get yourself set up, to, to offer yourself to experiment with a product or a service and then showcase and share that experience through your channel. So it's very organic, it's very unique and maybe something you would enjoy and it's a, it's a bit of an easy win-win for, for a brand to, to really kickstart with you. Um, okay, moving on to the next slide. Oh, yeah, sure, thank you. Um, so the next slide is, so we're looking at you know, passive versus, versus active integration, and the storyline integration, and there's also custom videos. So this will be a very interesting challenge. If anyone guesses this, we'll all give you a round of applause as to what the brand is that's being integrated into this contest. So this is the first brand you'll ever pour, Racka Racka, that we did with you. You're about to see you change your mind about drinking and swimming. I'll piss off, mate! <laughs> Fucking Islamia! Oh!
directly targeting their audience who were typically the type of people who would drink and swim and kill themselves on Australia Day. And so the result was, people who watched it were actually really enthusiastic and saying, yeah, you're right, that's really stupid, I've done that before, it's so dumb, I'm never going to do that again. And so the message that came through and the reaction was actually extraordinary. So it was picked up by a lot of different newspapers around the world and was very successful. I think that was the first brand, it was the first brand so that Rapa Rapa ever did the brand that we did on this project. The second one, custom video, the brand that inspires your content will play a very small piece, but actually we won't, we're going to be running out of time. Um, so this was uh, a custom video, basically we did uh, a project for the BBC uh, Worldwide, they operated in Top Gear. Top Gear had a lot of bad press because no one liked new hosts, because they sort of sucked. Um, <laughs> and so they needed a, a strong Australian filter to get the Australian audience to engage and participate. So we created a, a couple of different pieces of content, this is one of them. And it was basically uh, a four-wheel drive versus dirt bike on a 7,000 kilometer journey through uh, Western Australia. And so we set it up in like a top gear challenge. So again, it sounded organic, it worked really well, and we got more minutes watched than the TV show uh, in Australia. So across all the programs, so it went very, very well. Uh, and they were quite happy with that. But that was a custom video. So a little bit different, but you get the general gist. And... Uh, Hello. Ah, cool. Um, I'm going to use the microphone because I'm not as loud as him. Um, so, what do brands want? We're going to talk about some of the things that brands are looking for when they engage an influencer in a, in a campaign. So, one of the most important things that they want is a target audience that matches their brand. I mean, this makes sense. If you're going to be, if you're targeting, um, like the Lifesavers example, a very specific demographic of 18 to 24 year old males, you need to find an influencer that talks to that 18 to 24 year old demographic. Um, they want the largest engaged audience that they can reach. So, that this is the most important. But then size is also really important. We speak to a lot of brands and all they care about is how big uh, the audience is. How many views are they going to get? What are the subscriber numbers? But we try to educate them that it's not really just about size. It's about niche as well. How interested is that audience in what you have to say? How influential are you over that audience? So you could have only 400 fans, but every single one of them will believe in everything you have to say. So, um, so that's a really important argument that you guys have as well, because uh, you know your audience better than anyone else. They want brand safety. So the life-saving example is a really unusual one, because really, you, it's really rare to find a brand that's willing to take that kind of risk and invest in a piece of content that is that offensive. Um, <laughs> typically, you know, you're, gonna work, you're gonna be working with brands that want a channel that doesn't swear, that doesn't, you know, necessarily um, contradict their brand values. So um, we, did a, we did a project with a brand that shall remain nameless, um, but we were working with them and they, uh, we pitched to them some really great influencers and creators and they thought, oh, these are great. They trawled back through the archives of their content and found one from like five years ago where they made a song about a snowman dick or something. And they were like, that's it, pulling the plug, we're not working with them anymore. So it's just something to consider. You might have created something back in the past, or you might be thinking of creating something a little bit offensive today. Um, and that might be fine for you, that might be all about your channel. But if it's not, just really consider that because a brand will be, um, will be aware of it when you're looking for that to make sure that you are a good ambassador for what they represent. 
Um, and that comes to brand alignment. So they want someone who has shared values. For example, if you're talking about a brand that is environmentally conscious, they're going to want to talk to an influencer that's environmentally conscious. Um, if they want someone like, if they're Red Bull or something, and they want someone that's adventurous and daring and wild, they want to find an influencer who's adventurous and, adventurous and daring and wild. So finding a brand, uh, finding an influencer that shares their values is really important too. And they're going to want to save money as much as they can, of course. Um, so they're going to be looking for opportunities to, um, like Steve was saying, you know, potentially offer something that's not financial. You know, they might prefer to give you a product or, or production resources or something that's not going to cost them actual dollars. Um, and so that might be something that suits you. It may not, but it's just something to keep in mind. Um, so how do you promote yourself? Um, one of the most important things, obviously, is to make yourself easy to be contacted. Um, there are a lot of brands out there who are constantly looking online to try and find influencers that will represent their brand. Um, but if you're not easy to find or easy to contact, then they're not going to be able to reach out to you. So make yourself contactable and put your business email um, on your videos, in your descriptions, on your channel descriptions, on your website, wherever it is that they're going to be uh, looking at your content. Um, reach out to brands. Um, there's no harm in reaching out to brands that you really like. If there's a brand that you really want to endorse, reach out to them. Maybe even do a free post as an example of the kind of uh, impact that you can have on their brand. Uh, and then reach out to them and let them know the potential that you, that you can offer them. Um, yeah, there's no harm in reaching out to a brand and saying, hey, I, I'd love to work with you. I, I really believe in your product because uh, chances are they'll be interested to talk to you. Um, and number three, create a pitch deck to send to brands. Does anyone in the room have a pitch deck already? Yeah, a couple of people do. Um, it's really important. It's a really easy way to basically show the brand at a glance exactly who you are. If a brand does reach out to you and they go, hey, I'd like to work with you. Um, if you kind of have back and forth emails, you know, a little bit unclear about who you are, it's going to make their job harder. So if you can package your whole pitch, everything about you, everything you have to offer in one clean, easy um, presentation, then they can send that off to their boss or their colleague or anyone, um, and it makes their job a lot easier. It makes it a lot easier to sell you, um, and it makes it a lot more likely that they'll say yes. So. I'm going to take you through the ingredients of a pitch deck that will be really helpful for you if you want to build something that represents um, who you are. So first of all, this is for like a single page document or two page document that you want to send around to potential brands. First of all, include a headshot or if you're not the face of the channel, just a photo that summarizes who you are. So something really clear that at a glance they're like, yes, remembering that face. Um, and of course the channel name is really important too. Include all of your links, so anything that you want them to look at, make sure it's really clear for them to find. And of course, have vanity URLs where possible so that it's really easy to, to find you and identify you. Um, of course, have a description. So have a description that describes your channel. Um, try and evoke a sense of what you do in that description. So um, rather than saying sort of like uh, weekly video diaries about my life, say something that's like exciting and um, uh, inspiring weekly videos that tells people about the lifestyle of Brisbane or whatever it might be. Um, so this is an example, Tina is explorer, taking her audience to the far reaches of the planet, uh, blah blah blah. So she's her weekly video diaries, so it explains the kind of content that she creates, promotes a healthy, outdoor, worry-free life. So those are the values that she holds on to. Um, and then her adventures take her from Kakadu to Yellowstone in the US, so again evoking that sense of what to expect. Um, and topics cover tourism, health and exercise. So it's good to give a sense of what kind of topics you talk about as well. So brands can kind of think, oh, I can imagine working with that person and how I can integrate with them. Really important to include your channel statistics and your audience information. So channel statistics should be um, whatever is the most impressive about your brand. So if you don't have a whole lot of subscribers, maybe include engagement to view ratio as the most important statistic that you that you want to present, something that really sells who you are and what you do, um, and you know basic basic numbers as well. So average views per video, um, the different followers you have per channel, and then of course include your audience information. So this is obviously where you can find this in the analytics, but finding your top countries uh, and finding your top demographic. Uh, that would be really helpful for a brand. Again, they really want to make sure that they're talking to their target audience. Yes? What about um, being approached about make edgy content? Is there edgy kind of brands that respond to you? Because it's not going to be how to get a brand deal, but that's because my content is here. 
Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a really good question, and it does make it a lot harder um, because, as I said, brand safety is something that a lot of brands are really conscious of. Um, has anyone heard of the channel Auntie Donna? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so they make kind of edgy comedy content, um, and they recently did a brand deal with V Energy Drink because um, V Energy Drink considers themselves to be an edgy brand. So it could be about finding, yeah, brands that consider themselves edgy, you know, like skate brands or energy drink brands, um, things like that, that they also, they want, they want to be seen as edgy, you know what I mean? Um, so it's possible, but it does make your life a bit harder, unfortunately. But one of the things, the, it, the genre makes a big difference as well. Comedy is typically a lot harder, for example, if it is a comedy channel to get yeah, brand. Yeah, it is. It's pretty Yeah. So but comedy is then really good for stand-up. So a lot of comedians on YouTube do a lot of stand-up comedy. That's where they make a lot of their revenue is through ticketing, uh, where you can drive your audience to a physical environment and generate revenue that way. So there's a lot of different ways. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Aussie Man Reviews does a lot of brand deals. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he does, so like, um, yeah. He does, yeah, does Game of Thrones, he does lots of stuff. Yeah, yeah. a lot of the stuff you wouldn't think is branded is, is branded now. Yeah, I know you get Yeah, it's hot. Yeah. What happens if your channel is like really, really small? Yeah. How can you get a brand deal out of that? Like, I only have like 800 subscribers and I get like 60 to 70 views depending on what video gets uploaded. Yeah. How yeah. do you get a brand deal out of that? Well, you, have to, you do have to think about what value you can present to a brand. Um, if, if, yeah, it might be that you do have a really strong following, that 800 subscribers is really strong or really niche, you know, if you have a very specific topic that you, um, that you cover, like for example, if you're the most followed knitting channel on YouTube, then maybe some <laughs> wooling Wool company will be really um, So finding your niche and then finding a brand that speaks to that niche could be the way to go. Um, and then of course, yeah, you do you do need to work on building that influence too, because ultimately that's what is what a brand is looking for. So the bigger your numbers are, the, the more appealing you're going to be to a brand as well. Cool. Um, yep. Um, include a feature video, so give them an example of your work that you want to highlight, so something that really sells the story of why they would want to work with you. Maybe a past brand example, or if you don't have one, um, just something that you know they can envision themselves within that piece of content. Some photos or whatever it is that you can visually represent who you are. Um, past brands that you've worked with, but obviously in this room there are a lot of people who haven't worked with brands before, so in that case, the kinds of brands that you want to work with, so clothing company or tourism brands, something, just make it really clear the kind of stuff that you're looking for. And in that regard, this is where you can offer to, you know, to experience one of the things that they offer in return for the other brand integration, so they don't pay you, they make it easier, and you can start to build a portfolio of stuff that you've done. Yeah. Uh, and finally, examples of how they can work with you. So what is it that you are going to offer them? Um, can you cre create a dedicated video just for them? Uh, would it be a video shout out? So just at the end of it, you know, you've seen those audible shout outs. So the video itself has absolutely nothing to do with the brand, but at the end you can do a shout out and say, this video is uh, sponsored by this company. Um, social media promotion, giveaways, custom packages. Think about what it is that you could do for them um, and, and make that really clear. This is, oh sorry, I was just going to say, this is how you could do a one pager, um, and one page is really all that a brand probably have time for, but basically the idea is to give them as much of a sense of how, of picturing how their brand could fit into your piece of content as possible, so uh, that's really what you want to work towards. Yes? Um, so for, I have a question, two questions, but for the description, how long should that be, or like, how, what's your max, or you should be much further than that? Um, there's no, there's no hard and fast rule about that. Um, but they, they don't, they won't have a lot of time to read it. So the more succinct you can make it, the better, basically. Um, if you have a lot of stuff to say, just try and make it as small as possible. And then I had a question about the video that you did too. So if you haven't had a brand deal, yeah. um, when you're formatting that, should you, should you utilize a video that's kind of like more of the about video from your channel style, where it is giving them information about you? Or should you include a video like this? <coughs> Or yeah. Something where you could more so see a brand in it. Yeah. So should it be a little bit more about you and what you do, or a little bit of an idea of how a brand can be integrated into that? Uh, that's
that's a really good question. I think it probably just depends on, on your channel, on the quality of your video. The one that's going to show you in the best light is probably the one that I would go for. Um, so for some people that would be a channel trailer and for some people that would be like a really great video that they've done you know, in the past. Yeah. Alright, so when it comes to pitching yourself, there's a really clear framework for how you want to make a pitch. So first of all, you have to make it clear what you want. Uh, don't make it airy-fairy and kind of them going, why are they talking to me? I don't, I don't know what they want from me. Be really clear and upfront about what it is that you want. Uh, second of all, what value do you bring? So to that point about if you have a small audience, what else are you offering to them? Um, is it a matter of you're only going to get them five views on a video? That's probably not going to interest them too much. But if it's going to be that you're going to have five or 50 people who are really highly engaged in talking about that product, then maybe that's something they want to talk to. Um, and finally, what actions does the person that you're talking to need to take? Um, are you expecting them to email you back with a response? Are you expecting them to um, come up with some, to meet up with you and have a conversation about how you can work together? Make it really clear about what actions you want from them so that it doesn't just kind of trail off. Um, just make it as easy as possible for them to talk to you. Um, and the big question that we get a lot of the time is, do you need to have a manager um, or be part of a network? I'm sure that all of you guys are kind of wondering, is this something that I need to do in order to build? Um, and the answer is, you don't need it. Um, there are definitely <coughs> benefits, there are pros and cons. Um, so some of the benefits that you can uh, think about when working with a manager is, of course, they will help you find brand deals and they will help to promote you. Um, they may open up other opportunities and collaborations, so in the case of like talent networks, they might uh, line you up with other creators that are similar to uh, open up opportunities for collaborations. Um, and uh, they might help you manage your rights online, so if you're talking about an MCN who has rights management <laughs> capabilities, they might help you with that, so organising music tracks and things like that. Um, but things to consider before signing up with a manager or a network is they will take a cut of your brand deals. So typically it's about 12 to 20 percent of the money that's dedicated specifically to the influencer. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that out of a hundred dollar deal you'll get 12 to 20 percent of that. A hundred dollar deal might include the production resources they put behind the video um, and other expenses, strategy work, and stuff. Uh, but what, once they get to the number that they're going to give to the influencer, you get about uh, they sorry they take 12 to 20 percent of that. Um, you want to define your terms up front and insist on paperwork. So uh, this is really important because a lot of the time people just think, oh, I really want to get on board with a network or something. I'm just going to you know, sign my name here. Thank you very much. And they don't realize that they've actually got into a deal where they're not necessarily getting anything out of it, um, but they've just, you know, uh, the, they need to put in more work in order to get anything of value. For example, they might need to uh, have 10,000 subscribers before the brand will start before the manager will start seeking out, proactively seeking out brand deals for them, in which case, for some people, that would not be beneficial. Um, research. Know what you're getting yourself into because they're essentially becoming your business partner. So do a lot of research online. Um, check out forums about this manager or network um, and just really know who you're getting into bed with. Um, and even chat with the people who they represent at the moment and people who they've represented in the past because sometimes you'll find that they've had a really amazing experience or maybe not a great experience, and it's really good to know that before, before you've signed the contract.